Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Masoud Olia and I'm a professor in the uh, School of Engineering at Ventworth University in the uh, Mechanical Engineering program and I'm back with another light board uh, video for you. Uh, this one related to the topic of vibrations, in particular uh, harmonic excitation, meaning uh, a system that is uh, <clears throat> being disturbed by force, which is harmonic. Harmonic means you're having a sine wave or cosine wave. So in this case, as you could see, we have well, what we call a slender rod. Slender rod basically means that the ratio of the length to diameter <clears throat> is more than 10, so at least 10. And the mass of this rod is 10 kilograms, let's say. We have two springs attached at different positions to this uh, bar, and obviously this is pivoting about 0.8 due to this applied force. The, the stiffness is unknown here, and as you could see, the length of the bar is three meters, um, 111. So this is subjected to a harmonic force with an amplitude of four, say four newtons, <coughs> and the frequency, and this is, typically called the driving frequency, the input frequency. And uh, the frequency is five. So the problem says, okay, given the mass and this setup, we wanna find K, the stiffness, such that the system will be in resonance. Now resonance means what? Resonance means, uh, or it happens when the frequency the input frequency is the same as the natural frequency of the system. So resonance implies that omega n is the same as omega dr, this driving frequency. So in this case, we want our frequency to be this five radians per second. So this is really a simple problem. What we have to do is to get the differential equation of the system, and as a result, get what we call equivalent mass and equivalent spring. And then once we have those, we can figure out the natural frequency very easily. And we know that natural frequency has to be equal to five because it has to be exactly the same as the driving frequency. So let me go ahead and draw a free body diagram for you. So obviously we have this force here, which is given. Uh, we'll be taking moment about this point, point A. Well, typically we have reactions here, but those reactions are not really important to us. Now, I have to <clears throat> make a note here that gravity does not play a role here. So assume that this system already has sagged a little bit, right? It has rotated a little bit, reached the static equilibrium, then you apply the force. If you do a complete analysis, actually, you notice that the effect of gravity is out. So I'm not gonna even put an mg term in the middle of this bar, okay? Uh, maybe in another video show you why that's the case. That's uh, show you the analysis, a complete analysis. In any case, notice that when this guy, due to this force, rotates or pivots about this point, uh, <coughs> the spring here is going to be compressed by how much, if we call this angle theta, and this is one, we know that theta and tangent theta are the same for small angles, so that would be this deformation, I call it delta one, I call this deformation of this point, divided by one, opposite over adjacent, so delta one actually becomes one times theta. Similarly, this point, if you call this delta two, then you could see it becomes two times theta because this distance to here to the pivot point is two. So keep that in mind when you show the uh, forces due to the spring. So for example, when this spring is compressed, it's pushing back up, and the force is K times this one theta, right? And then this spring, when it is <coughs> stretched by delta two, also pushes back up, but its force is gonna be K times two theta. So we are ready now to apply the equation of motion. Remember, this is a rotational system. For rotational system, we have to take moment about the pivot point and set that equal to J sub A. In this case, by the way, in the notation, 
J here is the mass moment of inertia, the same as I, by the way, uh, which is a, the integral of R squared with respect to mass. And we know for a slender rod, for example, we have a slender rod, and that slender rod is rotating about its centroidal axis, I or J, and usually that's denoted by bar, is 112 ml squared. Of course, we are rotating about here now. And then if we use the parallaxis equation, right? Again, we could use the notation uh, I or J. Oh, let me just go back to the J notation. J equal J sub A in this case is equal to J bar plus MD squared. So in another video, probably you've seen this, that J sub A becomes 112 ml squared, and D is the distance between the two axes, which is L over two. And when you do this, and this becomes one third. So anytime the pivot point of a slender rod moves to this each side, doesn't matter left or right, the mass moment of inertia about that pivot point is one third ml squared. Okay, let's get back to here. So some of the moment taken about the pivot point should be equal to J sub A, in other words, the, the mass moment of inertia through this axis, right, uh, times alpha. And since the disturbance due to the force is clockwise, we take that to be positive. Look at your free body diagram. The moment of k theta is k theta times one, that's negative, right? The moment of this one is also negative because it's going counterclockwise, but remember you have to multiply it by two. And the moment of the force is times three, equal j sub a times alpha. In a minute, I'm going to actually calculate L, uh, J sub A for you. Let me just take care of this uh, first. For, by the way, let's get back here and say, well, what is J sub A? One third ml squared. Mass is given to you, 10, and the length of the bar notice is three meters, right? So that becomes what? That becomes 30. Unit is what? Kilogram meter squared. I was leaving the margin of my... Um, board here, so that's why I moved the, uh, the unit down there for you. <coughs> and remember that alpha is theta double dot, right? So when, once you clean this up, you end up getting uh, 30 theta double dot, right? You have a four plus one, that's a five K theta. And then guess what? I'm gonna keep this in the other side so that's f of t. If I take this 4 sine 5t and multiply it by 3, I end up getting 12 sine 5t. And that's all you need, guys. In a way, this is your equivalent mass or equivalent j, and this is your equivalent k. And remember, natural frequency is what? Is square root of k equivalent over mass equivalent. And because we want this to be uh, reaching resonance, uh, that has to be equal to five, the same as the driving frequency. So if you go ahead and put equivalent K, which is 5K, over equivalent mass, which is 30, and say it equal to five, and then square both sides, right? Uh, what do we end up getting? We end up getting, let's see, we square both sides, we get a 5K over 30 equal 25. So actually K becomes 150 newtons per meter. So if the stiffness here and here are in 150 newtons per meter, this system will uh, be at resonance. And remember, resonance is dangerous. Uh, the solution to this, uh, which I will probably show you in another video, theta as a function of time, meaning this angle due to the disturbance. As a function of time, it would be probably some amplitude times t times sine of the frequency, sine or cosine. Could be sine or cosine. But you see, the problem is this. Of course, this is based on initial conditions being equal to zero. And I'll show you how this will behave. I'll show you here, right here. Look, basically, if you plot theta versus time, assuming that initial conditions are zero, this system will behave like this. 
the amplitude will keep getting larger and larger and eventually your system will collapse. That's what resonance is. So, and that's as a result of this T, you see, or this envelope represents that T. And as the time gets larger, the amplitude gets larger and larger. And eventually, if this was really a mechanical system, a real system, uh, it will start flying. And the springs will break and failure would happen. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, um, please like the video, subscribe if you want to see more videos, and I'll be back with more uh, of these type of problems. Thank you.